Welcome back to the crazy fantasy football today. I'm Jamie. That's Dave. That's Adam. We're keeping it up, keeping you up to date, keeping ourselves up to date about who's playing in week nine because all the injuries that we're dealing with, again, big story to follow is Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins not practicing on Friday. We hope to have an update for you if they'll both be able to play in Sunday's game against the 49ers. But now we're going to get to the players that we like and maybe don't necessarily love. The players that you're starting, we're ranking relatively high. We hope they're going to play well, but there are some questionable situations that they're dealing with. Adam, you are up first, and I'm very disappointed in you because you put Miles Gaskin, my start of the week, as a player that you like, you just don't love. Well, I don't know if you're aware of this about Miles Gaskin, but he's Miles Gaskin. He's been the most frustrating guy in fantasy all year. Being start of the week makes uh, makes total sense. First of all, you got to be a little bit bold with start of the week. Secondly, he's facing a team that gives up the most yards per carry to running backs. They are legitimately great against pass catching running backs, though, somehow. But I think he'll still have a nice role in the passing game, especially with Parker out. I think he's going to have a good game. I'm going to tell people to start him. But I don't know how you can have that much confidence in Miles Gaskin. He's dropped the ball. Uh, so many opportunities. He just never got. He hasn't scored yet. He hasn't scored a touchdown. He doesn't have a carry inside the five yard line. We think those are going to go to him. He's been on the field there since Malcolm Brown has been out. But if they somehow use Ackman in that situation, you might be a little bit disappointed. So I, it's just tough to trust the guy who has been probably the most annoying player to roster in fantasy so far. How dare you? How dare you put the start of the week? You know what? Get off my show. Get off the show. We don't want to see you anymore. See you later, Adam. All right, let's go now to the next guy, Dave. Uh, DJ Moore is the player that you like but don't love. Uh, so tell us about DJ Moore when uh, we'll eventually bring back that I'm, other guy. Well, gosh, if you don't like this, what the hell is going to happen to me? I'm sitting right here. Uh, look, uh, the problem with DJ Moore button. is... Uh, all right, let me stand up. All right, so the last, the last four games for DJ Moore... A 53% catch rate. Absolute nightmare situation. The quarterback play has been terrible. There's been nine off-target throws going his way. He's also dropped three passes. He has no touchdowns. He's not a factor in the red zone. And Bill Belichick knows exactly who he is, and he's going to know to take him away in obvious passing situations. So if the Panthers are playing from behind, you'll think, great, DJ Moore will rack up a lot of catches and yards, and maybe he'll score. I think it's going to be hard for him to do. And when they're not playing from behind and it's third down, Belichick's going to double-team him. I am nervous about him. I'm actually encouraged that you've got him ranked lower than me. I should probably have him ranked closer to where you've got him rather than where I have him. I think he's going to be a total disappointment this week. I I, I probably am going to move him up, though, and I don't, I don't we know should you, trade. Though. I don't know if you're going to agree because J.C. Jackson may not play. So if he's out. Even if J.C. Jackson I, I think that play. I think that does help him, though, a little bit because that's clearly the best cornerback. Jalen Mills is going to play because uh, they yeah, used him to shadow yeah, and they well, can put a safety over I, the top. I, I just think, though, if, if Jackson's there, it's a different story. If Jackson's gone, that secondary is a little bit different. So, And obviously, quarterback situation matters as well, so mm -hmm. we'll see who's the quarterback there. But I'm with you. I don't love DJ Moore this week. I think he's one of those guys. And for the most part, I think all season we've been starting him based on maybe his entire career, what the potential might be as opposed to what the production is. Sometimes volume. he produces, uh, but sometimes, as we know, he leaves us a little bit uh, frustrated. And, and, again, Terrace Marshall coming back could change some things as well for how the targets Agreed. go. Obviously, Christian McCaffrey coming back could change some things as well. All right, let's go now to the next guy, Justin Herbert. We can bring back Adam Mazur. He's welcome back on the show. There he is. Uh, Justin Herbert is somebody that we've seen uh, two straight games of frustrating performances. Hopefully, this is a better game from taking on Philadelphia. And hopefully, we start to see the Justin Herbert of last year, of earlier this season, when he's throwing the ball a little bit more and playing with a little bit more freedom, allowing to lean on his guys, Mike Williams and Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler. And so it's a not a difficult matchup against the Eagles. We did see their defense play much better last week, but will we see uh, Darius Slay take away one of the guys and make that a little bit frustrating for Herbert? So, again, a guy that you're starting, you're not going to get cute and start any of these other guys that we've talked about this week, Derek Carr, Tua, uh, Tyrod Taylor, you're not going to start those guys over Justin Herbert, but I just don't love him to the same extent that I did coming into the season, certainly after the last couple of weeks. So, Adam, do you share that same sentiment on Justin Herbert? I absolutely do. I think this could be another bad game for Mike Williams. Just like DJ Moore, I'm going to start Mike Williams, but he's got two straight games with two catches, fewer than 30 yards, and there's a good chance Darius Slay is shadowing him. And when you take away Mike Williams, you take away that big play element that I think uh, Justin Herbert kind of needs. And that's what the Eagles do. They play deep with their safeties, and they do not give up a lot of big plays. So uh, I am starting him. He'd be a top-10 quarterback for me. I don't think he's going to have one of his huge weeks, unfortunately. I do think you're going to have an opportunity for a buy low after this week. This just isn't a very good matchup for him. They have to keep it. They were terrible in pass protection last week, and Brandon Staley called them out on it. 
So they have to be better there. It's a, it's a big problem, and uh, I would not use him in DFS. So stay with Mike Williams there also because he's struggling. Uh, three of his last four games have not been very good. Uh, but again, still starting him or somebody that you might want to get away from? I am starting him. Look, I, I look at the wide receiver landscape, and the buys are actually pretty tough on the wide receivers this week, you know, especially with Seattle and Tampa Bay out in Washington. So I don't, I can't find ways to bench these guys that are on my team. I have a, a number of Mike Williams teams. I have some DJ Moore, and they're in my starting lineups, you know. So that's why this segment is like them, don't love them. I'm just going to suck it up and start them. But again, it's a DFS thing. I don't think Williams is going to have that good of a game. Darius Slay has been awesome this year, and it kind of makes sense that they would use him on Mike Williams. You know, I, as Herbert goes, Williams goes, or as Williams goes, Herbert goes, and I'm nervous about those two, but I can't find a way to get it out of my lineup. I would start Jalen Waddle over Mike Williams if I had that choice. But at the very least, we know that Mike Williams can be a red zone target. We've seen him do that before. He's also a big play guy. So there's two elements that he's ahead of DJ Moore on. So I'm going to take him over DJ Moore in my PPR rankings and in my non-PPR rankings, even though the matchup is tough. And I'm encouraged by Herbert because I think this Chargers offense knows that they need to get some things right. And one of the things they need to do, Adam talked about it, the pass protection. This isn't an easy matchup for that offensive line, but I think they can step up to the challenge. The other thing that they can do is use Jared Cook more. This could be a tight end week for the L.A. Chargers to get him involved, and I think that they can try and mix and match other players as that third receiver, whether it's Cook, whether it's Donald Parham, whether it's Jalen Guyton, although this week he's more of a downfield threat. could be a Josh Palmer week. All those guys can help Justin Herbert. Even if they have to dink and dunk their way down the field, they can get creative when they get in the red zone. I don't mind Herbert this week as a top-10 quarterback. Yeah, no, I think we all like him as a top-10 quarterback, but I think it's just a matter of will he be a top-10 quarterback. You know, we like him to be, hopefully, uh, there. It's That's kind of why he's on this list. Another guy on this list is Cortland Sutton, and we've seen now two games with Jerry Judy on the field, two games of mediocre production. I don't know if it's a tie-in because Judy didn't finish the first game, so, you know, it's hard really necessarily to say. But last week, Teddy Bridgewater's numbers were down, and obviously all the receivers kind of struggled. It was actually Tim Patrick was the best receiver of the trio of Sutton, Patrick, and Jerry Judy. So, Dave, you're a uh, Jerry Judy guy uh, coming into the year. I know you've gone right back to him. Yep. Just in terms of of the uh, opportunity and, and feeling for Cortland Sutton this week, where you at? Uh, I'm down on him, obviously. I don't have him as a top 24 receiver, and this is another receiver that I could look at moving him down further in my rankings. I think this is the receiver who's most likely to get Trayvon Diggs in coverage in Denver, yep. or forward Denver, against the Dallas Cowboys. And it's been those middle field targets that have really eaten up the Cowboys this year. Look at Adam Thielen, Chris Godwin, Keenan Allen. DJ Moore did it. Kadarius Toney did it in a significant way. I think that's where Jerry Judy lives, and I was really encouraged how Jerry Judy played in the second half, and specifically the fourth quarter of last week's game. He and Bridgewater started to get back on the same page. I absolutely love Jerry Judy this week and would start him ahead of Cortland Sutton. All right, hopefully Judy delivers, shaking off the rust last week. Hopefully he's ready to go and can be uh, deliver on what we hoped would be a breakout season for him and getting back on track after the ankle injury sidelined him since week 